Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to make a DIY rainbow birthday banner for baby Luna's birthday, but you can use it for any occasion you want. We're going to use a little bit of light blue fleece for the background, and then we're going to use some different pieces of felt. Um, I have the rainbow colors here as well as white. And then we're going to use some scrap fabrics, um, again rainbow colors um, or rainbow fabric and also ribbon if you want. You basically can embellish it any way you want. Um, and then Mary Ellen gave me this great sticker kind of lace that I'm gonna use to trim the edges around just to make it a little bit more girly. But obviously if it's not for girly, you don't have to add the lace. <laughs> So the finished banner is going to be uh, 9 inches by 11 inches. So what I did was I folded over the um, salvaged edge and um, used that. we're going to use that for the pocket rod. And then I measured from there down. Um, and then I made two measurements, lined them up, and um, drew a straight line. And then I measured uh, the, the 9 inches across from the cut edge. And then I drew that straight line and cut it out. Um, this banner has a two-point peak at the bottom, so I went ahead and I folded it in half and cut that out. And then I went and laid out my um, my design, basically. Um, this was inspired by something that Eden had found on um, Pinterest, so we um, kind of knew how we wanted it to lay out. We just wanted to make it our own. So I made a simple rainbow um, there's lots of different ways to do this. You could um, use a, com a, a protractor um, or a compass, a, well, really a protractor you would need. Um, and then um, my, my only trick that I want to tell you is after I've cut it out, I made sure that I um, made each, each inside of the arch, the underside of the arch, I made that um, as lined up with the paper and then the top arch I made lined up with the color above it and it just made it a little bit easier trying to line them up because sometimes you don't cut it out right sometimes you don't trace it right but this way um, you'll cut out the bottom right on the line and then the top will match the orange and then I when I was cutting the top arches the orange the one above it <laughs> when I was cutting the top arches I did cut on the other side of the pen we are writing on the back side of this um, felt you know we're going to be gluing down the pen side so we don't have to worry about pen marks and uh, but of course if you have a chalk marker a uh, chalk marker just won't show up on the camera here so I, I wanted to be able to show you guys to see it the other thing is her birthday is on St. Patrick's Day so I'm adding a shamrock under her one but the inspiration piece just had a like a um, like a reflection like a bigger one underneath the the one that they had um, and then of course any number that you want to fit inside but because her birthday is two days before St. Patrick's Day she's having a um, lucky one's birthday party um, basically St. Patrick's themed birthday party okay and then we're going to repeat with all of the colors to go down. And then um, I'm cutting them out with my fabric scissor because felt is fabric. Um, but um, I definitely need to take it and get it sharpened for sure. <laughs> it's, it's, seen, it's, it's seen better days. <laughs> um, okay, so once you have all your colors cut out, the only thing I told you, I didn't tell you we needed, um, I'm going to use a little bit of batting for the clouds. Uh, that's optional. Um, you can use white the white felt if you want to as well. I'm just gonna um, I have lots of the batting laying around left over from um, projects and I just thought it would be a really cute addition um, to make this a little bit different. And now I'm just laying it out. You know, you guys uh, definitely want to always lay it out before you glue anything down. Uh, make sure you have enough room for anything. If any of your um, things need to be rearranged or trimmed down, you want to definitely figure that out before you start gluing now because this is felt on felt I could have used like Eileen's tacky glue um, you also could have sewn it um, I just opted for hot glue um, really just because of the speed to which it it sets up um, but of course be careful because it's fabric um, so what I started with after I had it laid out I left the purple one there and I glued the purple one where I wanted it to be and then because I precisely arched um, the insides, um, I was able to go ahead and overlap those um, just accordingly. So um, you definitely want to start. You guys know your rainbow colors, right? Roy G. Biv, um, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. So for backwards, it's 
purple, blue, green, uh, yellow, orange, red. All right. And try to line up your edges and all those things. So now that you have that all set, we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to cut out the batting clouds. So again, cumulonimbus. I always think of the movie Up whenever I think of that's a cumulonimbus cloud. Um, but whatever kind of cloud you think is the most appropriate. You like cirrus clouds, you like cumulonimbus clouds, you just want to pull the cotton off. I don't care. Um, but just cut it out to mark. Um, if you can see, I can kind of see through it. So I laid it over the cloud, uh, the rainbow, just to get an idea of where I wanted to draw it. And then I hit it with a sharpie and like polka dots around where I wanted to cut. Um, can't really draw on batting very well. Um, and then I wanted to add a little dimension. So I cut a few pieces with a similar but different shapes. I know that sounds silly, but um, the similar like long direction shape that I did. And then I just did it for layer effect. And none of that's glued. Only the rainbow is glued so far. Because I want to make sure that I lay it out. I want to get my letters cut out before I go ahead and glue my clouds. So I want to make sure everything fits. So what I did was I just took a piece of paper. And I just draw Luna's name. I did basic handwriting. This is not fancy font. I just tried to keep my letter thickness the same. Um, I drew two, drew two lines just like what we practiced when we were in elementary school. Okay, and again, it's supposed to look kind of freehand. And then what I did was I drew, drew over it with a Sharpie so that when I flipped it over, you would be able to see the lines. Then I took the Sharpie again and I drew it on the back side. This way I would be able to trace it um, through the felt, right um, through the paper, right onto the felt, excuse me. And then I just took my thin Sharpie to do that, cut it out. And you want to make sure that you do them backwards so that you don't have any ink on the front of, you know, in case your pen slips or um, you don't cut it properly, you don't have any ink on your letters. You want to uh, trace them backwards as well. Now, I know I have a Cricut. I haven't set my Cricut up yet, but I know that there is certain felt you can buy um, to, to use with your Cricut. I just um, haven't gotten there yet, and plus I had um, these materials. Um, well, I had some of these materials already, so I wanted to go ahead and do it this way. So now that I have all my pieces cut out, I'm laying it out. I'm making sure that I have um, room for everything. I like this spacing before I go ahead and glue anything. And then once I have that down, I want I want it to you lift up one letter at a time, so that you can put it back uh, roughly where it is, using the other letters to line it up. Um, and I've just done a really light coat of glue. Same thing with the shamrock. I've pulled back the top part, added glue, put it down, and then done all done it in thirds that way. And now the clouds will be the same. Just um, the clouds actually hang off the banner, which is really like cute. That was one of the things from the inspiration piece that I really adored. Um, so I wanted to make sure I went with it. Now the inspiration piece just had this lace going on the bottom peaks, but I wanted to go ahead and wrap it all the way around. And like I said, Mary Ellen said she got this lace. Um, she gave it to me last Christmas. I believe she said she got it from um, or uh, from oh goodness, uh, LTD Commodities. I believe she said. Um, but I have it and it's really cute and I just wanted to add it to this banner and because it's self self adhesive I just worked it around but if you have the lace from the Dollar Tree you just want to glue it to the back um, it's just easier for me to work this way with the sticky lace uh, because I've already glued the clouds on so um, my tr my tip to you is if you are gonna make this I would glue the lace on before the clouds that's all just made it get a little bit easier for you okay and now that that part is done, we're going to go ahead and thread this string. I'm just using the cotton twine that I got from, there's, they have it at the Dollar Tree, but it's still the roll that I have from Walmart. And then the inspiration had all of these pieces of fabric and pom-poms and strings all hanging on the sides. This banner is um, going to go on Luna's high chair. So um, it's you could put it anywhere, but um, that's where Eden wants it for. Um, so I just made sure that I um, made them uh, none of the strips any longer than 18 inches so that we wouldn't be, you know, hanging too low. Um, but then what I did was I just cut these strips of fabric and then I looped them on just like the inspiration had. It almost looked like the Windsor knot, but basically you want to go from the top with your half loop behind the string and then feed the tails in. And that's how you get this cute little like Windsor knot thing. And what's good about it is it slides back and forth on the string. So you can always adjust it um, when we get there and whatever we need to do, we can always adjust it. Okay. 
And then you, um, I just wanted to put both reds on to make sure that they worked. And then I went ahead and I cut the rest of my strips. These strips are anywhere from an inch to an inch and a half. I didn't measure. I just eyeballed. I just thought what would look good. The inspiration piece in her description, she actually said that they have frayed edges. Um, some of them I cut the bottoms in, um, in dovetail and some I cut on an angle and, and then some I even cut with a banner bottom. Um, so just to do what you do what you like, do what you enjoy. If you have scraps would be great. Ribbons would be great. Um, any of those things. All right. And I'm repeating the same with the other thing. The only other tip I'm going to mention is that the lengths of the pieces of fabric are variegated. So the the red one was really long, the orange one was shorter, and I did long, short, long, short, long, short, just to add some interest. Okay, and I wanted to thank my friend Sharon for getting me these uh, beautiful gingham fabrics. Um, thank you, Sharon. I know you're listening and you're like, what gingham fabrics? Well, she bought them a long time ago for me to make her daughter curtains. Her daughter is now entering high school in September, so um, that never happened. <laughs> but... I apologize. Um, I was working then. That's why. Anyhow, um, once you have all of your rainbow colors, I happen to have this rainbow fabric. It's got black lines between all the colors, so it's a little bit different. Um, and then I could have cut it in rainbow lame, with the length of the rainbow, but I cut across the rainbow just to add a little bit of an interest, uh, an interesting pattern. Okay. And then you just want to, I wanted, you could do whatever you want. I wanted to mirror um, the sides. So I went, um, in rainbow order from the banner out, um, depending on which side I was on and the same thing. So you fold it in half, you put, you go over the string, you put the loop behind it and you grab the two tails. It was a little bit difficult with the string. So I finally worked out that what you do is you pull the both sides of the string up while you're pulling both tails down. It took me a while to figure that out. <laughs> But I'm glad I figured it out for you so you don't have to figure it out. So I have some ribbon left over from the um, rainbow ribbon rainbow that I made. If you haven't seen that video yet, I um, please go check out the channel. Well, I should leave it in the description box down below. But I basically had these rainbow ribbons that I bought at Walmart. And I just used whatever remnants I had left. I think that they're each probably just a, you know, a foot and a half. Um, on both sides and I will put the red uh, to the left side of oh, towards I put the colors towards the inside towards the banner <laughs> basically it goes banner ribbon fabric ribbon fabric ribbon fabric so that's what I was trying to say um, and then I ended with the purple because I don't have a rainbow ribbon um, but all I did was the same thing. I basically created the half loop. I put it behind the string and I tied it the exact same way. But you can do whatever you want. As you know, you guys know, I like to see you design your own stuff. Now, here's the thing um, with this. You really could, doesn't have to be a rainbow. It just could be any banner and whatever your theme is. And I'd love to see what you guys come up with. So I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. If you do, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments down below. Don't forget to share this video with friends and family. Anybody who might be interested in making anything like this for their party. And if you haven't yet, click subscribe. And when you do, a little bell will pop up. When you ring that bell, YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video. And as always, you take care, God bless, and we'll see you next time. Bye!